and welcome to the show. This upload is coming to you October the 5th, 2016, and you're listening to the Post Money Plan Podcast. In today's episode, I will be asking some questions of a retiree and their perspective on the journey of personal finance throughout their uh, career with their spouse. Today's episode is, is hosted by myself, Dallas Post, the founder of the Post Money Plan, and my guest is Loretta. Hi, Dallas. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I, I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and you can just share your personal experiences, and that'll give our listeners a flavor for someone who is a retiree who's gone through the process, done it themselves, and uh, has some perspective and experience behind them. Okay, so could you just give us a little bit more background on yourself and where you're coming from with regards to your approach to finances with you and your husband? Well, first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm married for the 45 years, have two adult children, and um, I must say that my husband has always been very financially wise. So we'll go from that perspective because I don't think we'd have what we have today if it wasn't for his wisdom. Okay. And so uh, are you implying that you like started out from different perspectives? Well, we started out poor. We got married very young. We were in college, and um, we had our daughter soon after we got married, and we absolutely had no money. I mean, my husband had saved up money from when he was a paper boy, and he had, in fact, it was his money from his paper boy, uh, paper boy, his his uh, paper route that he paid for our first car. And so, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it. Um, of course, we only paid. I think it was maybe six hundred dollars. I'm not even sure about that. It might have only been two hundred dollars, you know, back in those. <laughs> <laughs> now we are only talking the early '70s, but we we got a car, and because we needed to have a car. But um, anyway, we we started out very poor, and we had very little. I don't know if you want me to tell you more right now on that. Sure, go ahead. Well, um, since we had nothing, we had to get some some jobs during the summer. Like we were in school and we hadn't finished college yet. So we, and that, well, that was another thing that's important to this whole thing, getting our college degrees. Now you can work without a college degree and make money, but we always felt at that time that, you know, if we had to have our college degrees, we'd be getting better jobs. So we stayed in school and therefore we chose, I guess, to be poorer because being a full-time student, of course, you're not working full-time. So what we ended up doing, we got part-time job. Well, I shouldn't say part-time. We got summer jobs each summer, and then we saved that money, like lived very frugally during the, the summer. I mean, saved most of that so that we'd have money to live on the rest of the year. Now, did you say when the kids came into play? We had our daughter right after we got married, so we, we had a you know our, a child. And so another thing we had to do is um, alternate our classes schedules so that one of us was home to take care of our daughter so that therefore we weren't paying for a babysitter until it got to the point when we had only so many classes left to take and you had to schedule it when they were you know whenever you could so we did have to pay for some babysitting later on but um basically we were trying to do it without paying for babysitters i can imagine that once your daughter came into the picture that it made things uh, it definitely put the pressure on and and made things is challenging i would imagine Oh, yeah, it was challenging. And of course, when you have a family, then you know you, I mean, of course, from my husband's perspective, I mean, he had a family to support. So yeah, it became very important that we had to have money to, to live on. And I guess you have to become an adult pretty fast. Yeah, we did. Okay, so I, I think that pretty much covers the financial position you, you started from in college. Do you have any more there about the college times or what you were going through then in, the, in those uh, like very early years? Only knowing that we had really little. We, like I said, we had to earn our money in the summer. And I did work full-time during the summer. And he worked, my husband worked full-time during the summer. And we were fortunate to have my mother was able to babysit. So therefore, we weren't paying for babysitting. Because child care can be quite an expense. But So we didn't have to pay for any babysitting. That allowed us to save up money for those early years. And how did you split certain financial responsibilities between you two? Like, did you handle utilities and or like bills, or did he handle this or that, or did you did uh, split no. anything like that? No, everything was um, whatever was earned was put in the the account, 
and that was what we had to live on. It wasn't that, um, except, I know that's not exactly true. In later years, whatever I earned got to be my spending money because he always earned enough that we could live on his income. Okay, but I was just driving at uh, logistically, if one person okay. took care of one thing and another person took care of another thing. Okay, I guess early on, and he'd probably <clears throat> have a different way to explain it, but I think early on he decided to let me like do the writing of the checks, paying the bills, because I know he felt like then I would see what we had, and then I wouldn't like I would understand like, well, oh no, you can't get that because this is what money we have, this is what we have to spend, this is what has to you know make do. So in that way, I was paying the bills. Like the money would be put in the checking account, I would write the checks, and I would pay the bills. Okay. Uh, you know, we kind of skipped over this, but were there any things that uh, your husband or yourself were taught either by your parents or in school uh, about finances? Maybe you're getting a, getting at more my earlier, my upbringing. I came from a large family. There were six of us, children that was, and we did not have much. I mean, we just didn't have, we were we were poor. So I, I didn't get to have a lot of new things when, when I was growing up. I mean, we didn't get new clothes every school year. I remember wearing a lot of hand-me-downs and just didn't have a lot. So therefore, when I got married and didn't have a lot, it didn't seem to make a lot of difference. I mean, I just was used to that. So we, I learned, I mean, I just learned to live and accept where I was at and what I had, what I had, and uh, it's just the way it was. Where were you in the six? I was the fourth. And did that dynamic come into play at all? I don't know. I wasn't the oldest. Where I'm sure the oldest would have had a lot more responsibilities. And but no, I don't know if that made any difference in my thinking financially. I mean, no, I wouldn't say that that had any play in anything. Okay. So basically you're painting the picture that in the early years, coming from a poor perspective and then starting out, you got married young, still in school, and uh, your husband's having to work multiple jobs and you're taking care of your daughter. So your approach to finances at that point in time was to be extremely conservative yeah, I'd say that's true. We only had money to buy what we needed, and we didn't have money for extras. And so we learned early on. Well, I mean, I'm not sure we learned it because of our situation or how we learned it, but we didn't buy anything that we didn't have. We didn't buy anything that we didn't have money for. So in other words, we didn't finance anything. So if we didn't have the money, we didn't buy it. And early on, my husband wanted to save money. And I remember when he got his... Um, his first job, let's see, I'm trying to remember if that would be the first job. Yeah, the first job after we graduated, and I remember my husband buying stock. <laughs> and I'm, I'm laughing because it's like from the very, very beginning, he was a saver and he also was an investor. Okay. Okay, so the theme that's starting to uh, emerge here is uh, once you were a couple that had moved out of college and were starting to establish yourselves, you both seemed to latch onto the idea of conserving your resources and, and saving. So then as time went on, did this approach change at all or the approach in general, did that evolve or change? Well, we, we saved money early on and that was really came from my husband. If it would have been up to me, we probably wouldn't have been spending money all. <laughs> we would have been spenders because I didn't have a lot growing up and I would have liked to have things. But he always wanted to save and he always talked about wanting to retire early. And so he wanted to save money so that he could be able to retire early. And that was just sort of one of his goals. And that was just the way we lived, I would say, throughout our whole married life up until we, I mean, we retired, that he wanted to save money. And we did save money all along. So then as you as a couple went through your career, how did you begin preparing for retirement? Well, it started from the very first job he had, saving money. We were always saving money. And at times I would say, I think we were saving ourselves poor because we were saving and really didn't start spending money in the sense of spending it for things that we wanted until much later in our in our married life. Um, I would say almost only in the last 15 years, say, of our married life did we actually start spending money, it seemed like. 
and, 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 and so I'm, that was like around 50 ish yeah 45 50 okay then concerning your finances what are some key things that you think you did right and then what are some other things that you might have done differently if you if you could have well i know one thing that we could have done differently we, this was a lesson that was like a hard one of those hard lessons sometime in our fairly early in our in our married life but not not right at the beginning because it was after we had gotten full-time job where my husband was working full-time somebody had a broker had called him up on the phone and wanted him to invest in commodities and so i mean they gave their story and it made it's like okay he wanted to invest money and he comes home and says like i'm gonna do this and it's like okay you're gonna do this so it turned out to be a scam and we lost all that money that we invested and i don't remember the amount but from that whole thing, what we learned is not to invest money when someone solicits you. In other words, if you want to invest money, you should go after, go to some, you know, you should do some research. You go check it out. Because they, they came after you without you knowing anything about them. True. And we got sucked into their story of how you're going to make all this money. And then we did it. And then we lost the money. Okay. And what about on the things that you did right? Well, I would say the things we did right are that we saved a lot of money. I mean, we just saved. We saved every paycheck. There was money that was saved. And then my husband had a lot of financial wisdom, and he invested money and caused it to grow. And, and we just he did well through the years because he saved, we saved. I mean, you have to have something to invest before you can, can invest money, so you have to save some money and have it. And would you say that like part of the saving was spending wisely? I mean, does that come hand in hand? Uh, sure. Um, we always had enough for food and for clothes and for the things we really needed, but we didn't buy extra things and we never financed anything. We never bought anything that we couldn't afford. If we couldn't afford it, we didn't buy it. Okay, final question. What tips or recommendations regarding personal finances would you make to the average person that's on, at, towards the beginning of their career? Well, I would say the important thing is to save money. No matter how much money you're making, always take a small a percentage of it and save it. Put it aside. And when you, when I say save it, it means you're putting it away and you're never going to touch it. And that, that sort of gets can be discouraging early on because you think, why can't I touch that money? But something my husband had said to me early on, he said, the more money you save early in your career, the more the better it is than at the end of the career. Like if you save money at 20 and that saves, you know, you're saving that for all those years and then you start saving at 55 and you're only saving for that next five to 10 years, it makes a big difference. So just saving from every paycheck is important, no matter what the amount, just saving some and putting it aside and not touching it. So you'd say that is definitely what you saw for yourselves and, and to where you are now that that effort paid off? Absolutely. And it was my husband's determination that got us there. I mean, there were many times that I always felt like we were saving poor because <laughs> it's like we were saving all this money, but we didn't have money to buy this, you know, this or that. But it did pay off. And when I say pay off, I mean that we can now live our, our retired life in comfort. Okay. So that wraps up our Q&A. I want to thank Loretta for being a part of the podcast and, and sharing your experience. Thanks, Dallas. It was my pleasure. I've enjoyed having you on, and I hope that your insight will be helpful to some of our listeners. Okay. And I'd like to thank our listeners for joining us on this edition of the Post Money Plan podcast.